beloved people of God and Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough through Jesus, the bread of life. You are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn, first hymn, gathers in, found in the red hymnal, page 
The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. The Israelites believed the law was a divine gift that provided guidelines for living out the covenant. Moses commands the people to obey the law and to neither add nor subtract from it. The Israelites are also to teach the law to their children and their children's children. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that they may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 And uh, Psalm 15 will be read responsibly. Responsibly. <laughs> Lord, who may dwell in your tab tabernacle? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right. The truth. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. The second reading is from James chapter 1. The letter of James was intended to provide first century Christians with instruction in godly behavior. Here, Christians are encouraged to listen carefully and to act on what they hear, especially by caring for those least able to care for themselves. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. The word of the Lord. Starting at verse 1, 
Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with the filed hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you, you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain they do worship me, teaching human precepts and doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of the father or mother must surely die. But then you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had come from me is Corbin, that is an offering to God then you no longer commit to doing anything for a father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. Then the, he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that going in can defile, but things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes up into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, This is what comes out of a person that defiles. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I have a children's sermon, so if any children would want to come forward. Come up, Chandler, and I need your dad to do something for me, too. Can you go flip on the light in the nursery? Thank you. Come on up, guys. A little bit of being so quiet. I'm so worried about your cousin because he wasn't quiet. <laughs> your brother's so cool. Great, <laughs> come on up, guys. All right, you're actually going to have to stand up. Stand up. Stand up on the top step, Chandler. All right. Have you guys seen the window in the back of the church? Yeah? What's through the window? You remember? What's through the window? That's the church nursery. And we can't see the beautiful artwork that's hung up in there. But we've made the church nursery have some new toys in there. Have you gone in the church nursery? Yeah? Have you seen the new toys in there? In the church nursery? Yeah? I know you have. Well, we got some new things in there because we've had lots of babies born this last year. Have you had lots of babies in your family this year? Last year? Yeah? Lots of little babies? Well, in baptism, we welcomed them into the church. But we also made an update and have new toys in the nursery to welcome them to being church too. Because sometimes when we're, how old are you? Three. Sometimes when we're three, it's really hard to sit through the whole church service. And so we have to go play in the nursery just to get some energy out. So I need your help today. I want everyone to stretch their hand out towards the window in the nursery. Can you put up your hand towards the window in the nursery? Yep, grown-ups can do this too, your children of God. Thank you, grown-ups. 
and we are going to bless the church nursery. So, repeat after me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For the new babies. For the new babies that have come to church. That have come to church. Bless this nursery. Bless this nursery. To be a place of love. To be a place of love. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. Now make the sign of the cross. Draw a cross with your hand. All right. Thank you for helping me bless the church nursery. You can go back to your seats. Go back to your seat, Chandler. Thank your dad for me, too. I asked and see how many babies we have baptized because I once said to um, some retired pastors that I have done a lot more baptisms than funerals since I started. And I, it is eight baptisms. I believe so. Eight baptisms. I have been here a year and eight months. That is an astounding number of baptisms. Astounding number to praise God that our community continues to grow. And it is astounding to all the other retired pastors when I repeat that and say how many. They're like, usually we don't reach that number until like year four or five. So it is a great blessing. Well, reading, we're back in our, the Gospel of Mark for our scripture reading. And it's talking about a lot of laws and traditions and a lot of things that are happening with the Pharisees. So I wanted to act, talk about a few of the some of the written or unwritten laws and traditions of a church. One church that I was in, the congregation had a sign up in their kitchen. I was just taped to the uh, above the sink for everyone to read. Most people forgot about this sign until a visitor came and read it and were like, oh, okay, that's a good sign. The sign said, can't serve powdered donuts or red fruit juice during coffee hour. Now, it was important enough to the congregation to put this sign up in the kitchen so that no one ever served those powdered donuts or red fruit juice. But here's another unwritten kind of law or tradition of a congregation. Many congregations have songs they love to sing, especially during Christmas. Well, in my home congregation, it's become more than a tradition. It's become more of a law that we have to sing this certain song. It's called C is for the Christ child. It is mandatory that all fourth and fifth graders participate singing this song up front, holding the di different letters of Christmas while every other person sings this song. To not sing it would be an uproar in the church. It would go against everything. They have to sing it during Christmas. And I'm kind of glad that I don't have to sing it during the Christmas because it's not your favorite song. I had enough of it as a child. So the thing is about laws and traditions is that you need to separate what's the difference between laws and traditions that happen from common sense, practicality, and health and safety. Sometimes we have different rules because Health and safety, you do that. Other things are practicality, like it is just practical never to serve powdered donuts and red fruit juice when you have three-year-olds in the room who will spill it. Makes common sense. It is the messiest food to serve during coffee hour. So it's not so much that it is a law that you have to live by or a tradition that you follow, but common sense. 
versus something else that might be a law or tradition that is something you've grown to practice. The text this week center on the relationship as we as followers of God have with laws, traditions, and living out our lives as God's followers. In Psalm 15, it begins with the Lord may dwell, Lord may we dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide on your holy hill. The answer comes in the following verses. People who speak from the truth from their hearts and whose actions match up with words of love. So who can dwell in God's holy place? You. And it's not because of rituals or traditions. The psalm never makes an allusion towards Leviticus or Deuteronomy. Their answer is, those who don't do evil can dwell in God's holy place and be in God's presence. So it's not a matter of law, but living as God's followers. Deuteronomy and Israel's statutes and ordinances are in place because this book talks about building up the community to be righteous and pure with God and each other. They're reminded of their history with God and as the people call together so they don't fall back on old habits. And these are given the commandments to help them live in community. And they are to pass down this knowledge as stories down to their children and children's children. So again, Israel doesn't repeat the same mistakes. And more importantly, they don't forget that God is so near. In verses 7 and 8, for what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God, whenever we call him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law? There is knowledge and justice in the statutes and ordinances that make up the law that surround Israel. Not in rules, but in a way to live and remember God. So what is our gospel then saying? Jesus has this discussion with the Pharisees, kind of the people who uphold parts of the law. The Pharisees have developed practices and traditions or customs according to their culture based on the law given to their people. These practices were to make their lives holy according to God and to live a life focusing on how to be God's people. And Jesus reorientates them and towards their discussion not to be focused on the do's and don'ts, but on the purpose of the law, which is about the matters of the heart, because the heart must be for God with God, seeking God, and loving what God has made. So Jesus rejects how certain interpretations and certain practices may deviate from or obscure the intent of the law in order to remain pure. While we can get so caught up in the details or distinguishing one person as better than another, creating obstacles that can't be overcome by everyone, and losing sight on how your heart should be focusing on God, that we lose sight on the difference between freedom of faith and the law of religion. So what place do laws and traditions have if they aren't about entering into God's presence in God's holy place? The laws and traditions aren't about blinding us to rules. They present a way that is living life that's affirming to God. Where one person might find a tradition and practice of a law constraining, another person might find the guideline helpful for giving them direction and an outlet or outline to keep their hearts holy, honest, and pure. As people of the resurrected Christ, we are not beholden to laws or ritual practices outlined, especially in books like Deuteronomy or Leviticus. However, those laws and rituals give good guidance to what God means about love, purity, and justice. The laws given by God give insight to who God is as a loving and just God. 
we repeat those words in our confession of faith that God is just and how God desires for us to live our actions in our community and live out this love and justice. Our call as a congregation comes at each baptism. We are told to tell stories of our history and share the word of God to our children and children's children and our children's children's children, you great grandparents out there, I know you're there. You share the story and word of God. We tell Bible stories to remind ourselves and let the children know that out of love, we are forgiven and given grace to be welcomed into God's tabernacle on the holy hill. Not through our own merits and certainly not through a set of tasks from traditions to do, but through God's justice which has freely given us salvation through Jesus Christ's actions on the cross and rising from the grave. So here are the words for today. And all of our scripture for today, do what makes you holy. Sometimes it is about following those traditions and rituals and practices because they keep your heart pure. Sometimes it's not about those rituals and traditions and practices, but you find what makes your heart holy. And holiness is always from God. Holiness is always about God's love and justice. And so that as people of God, what we do, we love and we give justice. Amen. Let us sing our hymn of the day, and we are going to sing it twice. Right, Linda? We're singing this song twice. We can try. We can try. <laughs> All right, it's a beautiful song. Uh, so let us sing uh, hymn number 512 twice. <laughs> Thank 
Congregation, please follow along with the bulletin insert. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ in the communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Sponsors. Called by the parents, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting the grace and love of God, do you desire to have life baptized into Christ? As you bring light to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer and the Creed and the Ten Commandments, and place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that why may learn to trust God and proclaim Christ through the word and deed and care for others in the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help them grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture them in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion of, with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Wyatt and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his birth. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose to him. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and then he comes to judge the living. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is his right to give our thanks and grace. We give you thanks, O oh God. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and raised us up to what live in you, pour out your Holy Spirit and the power of your living world, word that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
what? Baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks, O oh God, that through the waters of the Holy Spirit, we give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise them to eternal life, sustain Wyatt in the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The sign of the cross. <laughs> Wyatt James Evers. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. <laughs> Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and to the mission. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming world's word to all the world. Congregation, let us welcome him to our family. People of God, as you are able, please stand for the prayers that we pray together. <laughs> May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <clears throat> we pray for the whole creation, that the plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. We give thanks for the water that has come to replenish our soil, and we ask for our guidance and safety over our farmers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the individuals in positions of authority, raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Guide leaders, military, and relief workers in Haiti and Afghanistan and the surrounding countries that are responding to relief and those seeking refuge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those beginning a new school year, guide and empower teachers and school administrators as they develop and work towards starting this new school year. Guide parents and students who are coming into this new school year to have encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our new member in your family, for Wyatt Hurst, lead his parents, sponsors, grandparents, and this community gathered around him to learn the word of God. Lord, in your mercy, we ask for you to watch over and be with those in need of your healing touch, especially those that we name in our own congregation. For Jerry, Brent, Lisa, Linda, Sheila, George, Mark, Mary, Terry, Roberta, Lucy, and others that we name who are on our hearts. We give thanks for the faithfully departed who have shown us how to be an example of honoring God with all our hearts. Inspire us by the example that Mary Everson has set. Renew our faith and trust that we will be united again with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers of God and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
and now also with you. Share a sign of peace with your neighbor. We take this time in our service to give thanks with our offering. Please join me in our offering prayer. If you have missed the offering basket, it's located in the back of our sanctuary. Please pray with me. Blessed are you, our Lord. With them we offer us and dedicate our lives to the care and protection of all that you have made. First, we have to make it himself for us. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.